You ever think about quitting? It's the combat of life, hammering the snot out of you. Well, stand by, dig in deep, and get ready to get fired up with us. Welcome to the Team Never Quit Podcast, the number one podcast that inspires you to fight on. I'm your host, David Rutt Rutherford, here with Mr. Never Quit himself, Marcus Luttrell. Our mission is to help you embrace the suck of life, to teach you the values of working your ass off, and to interview the most hard-charging people on planet Earth. We know life is hard. It's time for you to suck it up, buttercup, and let us teach you to persevere in every environment imaginable by sharing real-world lessons learned by those who never quit. That's right. It's time, Marcus, for us to help them defeat the well, negative you insurgency me up, man. in their lives. You fire me up. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's roll. Let's roll. Let's roll. Good one, right? <laughs> I thought you were going to pull a team guy breath hold and see how long you carry that out. That was how long. That's it, dude. I'm, a, I'm like Wait, a minute. Wait, are you minute. micro long? Brother, I, I can only do about a minute breath hold nowadays. I did it oh, the other know. day with my kids. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're at that phase, too. <laughs> yeah. Come over here. Come over here, bear. Do a breath but hold But it's cool with, with, the, with the younglings because <clears throat> they're, they're micro lungs. So even if you can just do a minute, it seems like a long time to them, right? They can do like three seconds. Right. And then they're coming up, Ice right? is getting good. Is and he? Adelaide learned how to swim last week, so... Dude, it's on now. Now we go. Here we go. All right, so here we are, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. We are here back with the Team Never Quit podcast and in in another epic episode, if you will, because we've got somebody coming on today, Marcus, that I got to tell you, I've been wanting to interview from the first time Tate started talking about it. Definitely when when Tim talked about him and, and when Andre, you know, talked about him as well, too. How can you not want to bring the best of the best on the show? Sure, just those names that you dropped, the guys that we had had on because of their incredible lives. N now we got the guy who was leading the charge on that. That's Kinda big. Gave him the insight. Into the great part about him is that he has the ability to explain everything that he does. That's why he has champions underneath him, right? He he uh, all of that a lot information, of them. and then he then he can disseminate it amongst all the uh, all the fighters. So in fact, let's it's going to be a great show because we'll just let him take the helm. I mean, he'll run. He has that ability to explain his never quit moment. Well, he's one of the most articulate guys I've ever known in a in in a brute force in a gladiatorial arena. Right? Remember those instructors that you we would have going through buds who would. Uh, want to pontificate as they were beating the snot out of you. Yeah. <laughs> Who was it? Uh, 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 what was it? Instructor Ashelman? Remember? I don't know if you had him. He might have been gone uh, by the time you got there. Here's a shout out to a guy named Denny. Do you, have you ever heard him? Oh! The first time I'd ever heard the word befuddled was out of his <laughs> mouth. And we were we were doing it. We were I think we were doing over the horizon or something. You know what I mean? And Apparently, I was a new guy. I didn't know that apparently this guy has a vocabulary that is a, 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 I had no idea what that word was. And I guess a while back, he was in a conversation with somebody who, who was throwing out some big words and he didn't know. So he just got on a kick of learning them. And now he really talks like that. You know, you can tell when some people throw out some I'm words, I have no up. idea what that, that word means, but it sounded good where we, where we put it in. This guy actually does it. So, uh, yeah. Anybody who can articulate it in a manner to where everyone can understand it, man, that's kind of a blessing, right? It's a, it's a true blessing. Yeah. It, it means they're masters at their craft. And, and masters so much that, let me just go down the Jackson Wink uh, MMA Gym Hall of Fame inductees. Let me just read some of these. This is just of the course, Hall of Fame, right? This, this is just the Hall of Fame, not this just. This is not even the stable he's carrying right now. You got 100 fighters yeah. right now, right? <laughs> Let's just go through some of these. Andre Arvlosky, Derek Brunson, Diego Bernardo, uh, Darnold Cerrone, the Cowboy, uh, Carlos Condit, John Dodson, uh, Cody East, uh, Holly Holm, right? Uh, 
Keith Jardine, uh, Greg Jackson himself, uh, Ryan Jensen, John Jones. How about that one? For, for, and our boy Tim Kennedy, Diego Diego. Sanchez, uh, George St. Pierre. Diego, the nightmare. Uh, A brother. And there's more there. His first fight. Yeah. Oh, sure, man. You keep going down the list. Give him, give him a shout out. I, I just, what's remarkable to me is that some kid, some, as he describes himself, just some, you know, uh, anyway, poor kid. kid grew up from the outside of Albuquerque, you know, just, you know, had nothing, starts, you know, self taught martial artist, and then 25 years later is. One of the top MMA coaches in the world. There's there's a lot of fighting going on in the world. Am I right? Oh yeah. Well, I mean, you, you look at these guys and the fighters. The unique thing, the perspective on when he started and that whole warrior path and the mentality of it. It a lot of people, you know, they're scared to fight. They're scared of pain. Do you what, think that's the reason why people are just afraid of the pain associated with? A whole thing that comes with confrontation. Okay. It's you know, most it's people don't want fear. to deal with confrontation and then they even those who do up to a point and w- once the fists start flying, a lot of people will shot back from that unless it's a necessity. Right. The fight or flight. You gotta fight or right. you're gonna die. But obviously fighting is the end part of it to, to test the mental and, and the and the body. Right. The ultimate way to do that is in a fight. You want to know what you're made of? You got to get into a fight because everything can go good or everything can go bad all in one moment. And it's a lifetime. And then switch, right? The next yeah, moment. and it's a lifetime in three, you know, most fights don't last that long. A minute, maybe. Well, Professional fights street are fights. Trying, yeah, yeah, street fights. Who, who knows? That's the difference. Kind of like getting in the ocean, right? Everyone, every time is different. <laughs> but that was my fight, greatest fight. <laughs> right. Anybody listening to this even if you're a martial artist or fighter it doesn't matter man you're gonna you'll be able to take something away from this because it's the ultimate it's it's the pinnacle of combining the mind and the body being able to walk down that ramp into a fight the spirit too for yeah, sure my body's for sure so yeah. well and listen if this is your first time well actually for all of our listeners welcome back to the team never quit podcast we marcus and i and the wizard here we feel very blessed uh of your commitment to us and what you've enabled us to do uh, again, you know, we had just an amazing year last year. In six months, we became one of iTunes' pot, top podcasts of the whole year. All, every podcast that they have out there, so we're incredibly honored. For I still that think that might have been a typo. <laughs> well, you ought to call I mean, some of your friends right? over I mean, at Apple. Them, and ask I can't believe. Hey, <laughs> thank you so much. I, I still can't believe it, man. It's one of those I've been grinning like a shit-eating possum since <laughs> you told me that. I'm like. <laughs> It's pretty cool, right? It's beyond cool, and it's because of you, our listeners. If this is your first time, <laughs> welcome. Marcus and I and a wizard, our mission is to literally give you information that will help teach you to empower yourself, to face adversity, overcome obstacles, defeat the negative insurgency, and learn the never quit mindset for whatever purpose you're trying to live with in your life. Whether you want to be a UFC fighter, whether you want to be a baseball player, whether you want to swim from Cuba to, to Africa, I don't care what it is. Our mission is to help you learn some things that you might not have been able to discover in other places in your life. That's why we do this show. If you want to know more about it, go ahead and visit us at tnqpodcast.com. Follow us on social media at Marcus Luttrell or at Team Frog Logic. Follow us at Team Never Quit. And, and, and I'll tell you what, our whole purpose now out there is to help promote this idea that with each other, we can, we can improve and, and really, really exemplify that never quit mindset. And our mission here is to, to provide great stories that ignite legends. All right. Fight the fight game, Marcus. Why why do people want to get into fighting? Why do people go to fights or why do people get into it? Get into it. To actually to have it Test become themselves. their profession. I mean, there's multiple you can shave it down as much as you want. There's gonna be a something that happens to you, you get picked on, you want to build your confidence, you're just looking for a a, a way to better yourself. And ultimately An it's outlet? a confidence. Yeah, exactly. Outlet. Well, sure. The anger, I mean, it's a good way to, anything. Ultimately, but it, whether you want to admit it or not, or whether you believe this or not, you know, fighting, it, it, you can describe it in a million different ways, right? It's a dance right. Right? between two people or it's yep. a chess game or, or whatever it is. Ultimately, it's a competition between two people. 
And if you want to go deeper than that, it's competition between four people, the two, the physical being and the mental, right? Oh, absolutely. I love that. We don't have to go down that rabbit hole, man. But I, no, I love that um, aspect of it. It's huge. And again, on that, there's no other profession that leading up to it, you got to take a beat down. <laughs> sure. I mean, it takes some, yeah, some pain and some pressure, but it's it's the ultimate test. And, and what it lets you, basically what it does is it reminds you that you're human. And, oh, and, and anybody across from you is too. I mean, you hear these, some of these fighters get these reputations that just, you're getting into the ring with them will, will kill you. <laughs> and to overcome that, I mean, you especially if you're the underdog coming in and, and you listen, everyone, the thing about a fight, man, is people know it's going to go down. And then you have all those outside pressures, what you're hearing about this guy, what he's going to do to you. And if you got somebody who can really talk the game, the middle, I mean, Connor Chelsea McGregor. was epic. Yeah, Colin, uh, Muhammad Ali. I mean, just go down the line, dude. If they've already beat you in your head, stay, I mean, it's over. Right. right. I mean, it's just over. I mean, and that's what I like about the fight game in particular for me. For for us, you know, in the, in the teams, I think it's different, right? Where there's so much more going on than just, you know, the individual engagement with the other enemy force right we have all the other components uh, of well, the mission well, objective well, we, we're killing you know we're we kill people we're as killers man let's take it further right you normally in a fight that it's the test of how far you can take it and the kind of the duality of man before you end it now you're right? talking. And that's how the respect is built uh between two people i mean there is everybody knows this man coming up if somebody was picking on you or if you had a problem you went out and settled it you either settled it and it was over. You didn't talk anymore. Most of the time, you you were buddied up, right? You got that respect, whatever it is. You're not, and why that is that way when you, you know you're young, everything right. you don't know, right? And it's that I don't care how many ways you try and avoid the situation when boys are growing up and their testosterone's flowing. I mean, that's why we have sports, right? Football and stuff, anything, all yep. the, anything to do besides throwing these. Uh, but, a place to put all yeah, that energy. A lot of the younger generation, man, the, the kids who are in the game, and they go into killing themselves before they'll fight. You know, they're, they're scared, scared to take a whooping. Right. So they'll go and, and murder. And that that's bad, too. But the, the confidence that you get from, been, from knowing yourself to, to be able to take that kind of punishment in a fight is any situation you get into, you're like, hey, yeah, this isn't going to go down to a fight, man. There's no stress here. Right. Paperwork, whatever it is. I mean... Cut away all the white noise and always look at the person across from me in that in that physical. And this is what a fighter does. They just they can't help themselves. They just size up the guy next to you. It's just common. That's just how it is, right? Right. Especially if you go deep into that kind of mindset, like we do. I mean, when we're on the mark, when we're, we're carrying rifles and doing our business, you're locked in. Anytime we go into a door, I don't man, woman, or child, you're sizing it up. Right. You, you just have to. The evaluation process. Correct. Yeah. And and simultaneously evaluating the prep that you've put in, the prep that the guys next to you has put in. But what I think is unique about these cats, there's so much um, individualism in this. And they you really, man, it's managing, like you said, that negative speak, that internal fight yeah. that you're waging against. Hey, you're your, alone. Yeah, you're alone. And that's the unique thing about them. I mean, we don't have that. We're in the teams, nope. we got buddies. I mean, to do the things that we do is because, you know, hey, we got the crew doing it. <laughs> uh, but ultimately, you're going to have, and, and that's why it's the truest test, right? Because you're going to have to step out there by yourself. I mean, we got you this far. We'll be outside the cage. Screaming. You yeah, yeah no, good you job. can do it. Get and, up. And, <laughs> And the walk is just that's the that's the biggest thing. Once that first punch is everyone knows that. I mean, once you get hit in the face, you know, all you know, all bets are off. Right. <laughs> and it, right. it's go time. You your body and you you're ready for it. All the nerves and all that stuff goes away. Well, I'll tell you what, I you know, I had an incredible opportunity working with a, a UFC fighter in the past to help him with just that, that walk into the ring. And and one of the things I learned by just that limited amount of exposure and why I have such profound respect for Greg Jackson, who does it on a whole nother, I mean, the guys in the atmosphere is, is really the, 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 the requirement to, to not allow that person to be so introspective and so trapped in their own perception to have to constantly pull them out, keep them focused on their game plan, their mission, their fight plan, all this, as all of the madness is happening so that when they do cross that threshold, Clarity comes to them, right? And right. the purpose for every bruised shin, for every broken knuckle, for every broken rib, for every exhausted muscle or, or fatigue, you know, 
the eating, just the eating and cutting weight and all that madness that these fighters have to ensue. Oh, it's a life, the lifestyle. The lifestyle. It's yeah, comprehensive. Man. That it, it's worth it. That that summarizes their whole existence. Stuff, ain't it? Those guys who live in that life, that they're, all of their hard work and pain comes down to a few minutes. That's not how it is for us, right? No, I mean, no, it's, it, yeah, it's it's, and, it's different, and it's tougher. It, look, that's the hard. That's an extremely great point, man. The fighter mentality is, hey, look, I, okay, I won, it's over. Well, I got to start all over, just like we do. We get back from an appointment, you got to start all over again right for away. the next guy. And you're, it's not one of the deals. You get to the top and everything's gravy, right? You can take a break and just wait for the dudes to come up, man. You got to go back in there and get pounded. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, that belt pain. represents everything behind, that was behind that. And, and I'm really looking forward and hoping that Greg Jackson, our guest coming on here in just a second, is, is going to share that with us, right? Sure. Ha, ha, the, the idea that it's not about the pinnacle, it's not about raising, yes, to a certain degree, raising your arms, the belt over your head, but then it's the journey to get there. And I and I'm I'm really think that this guy is going to be able to shed some light on this for our listeners. I mean, this guy is is the best man sure. i mean he just like we said every fighter is an indiv individual i mean they look differently so he has in their eyes i'm Heal sure each fighter looks at him differently he has to be able to rotate from each guy to each guy they have their own personalities and the way they train so he's got to be able to mark up for each one of those yeah and then every pressure that comes with each one of those fighters and the emotion right Especially because oh, you got guys winning and, and losing, so you got to be able to mentally deal with uh, one of your fighters who just got beat, and then mentally deal with one of them who just won. Yeah, at the same hey, man, time. I'm sorry, you lost, but this boy won. Hold on, you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, man, you know, but it's a fight. That's it. Living in that world, it changes. As the coach, keeps, yeah, he's in sharp, the fight right? to 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 connect with those fighters and keep them going. And he has to know the other fighters. Oh yeah, I I I tell you what, just crazy that that even works, right? There's so much dynamic into doing what they do. When in fact, it's what what we say. We it's been the most core component of human existence since we started yeah. walking upright, right? Yeah. I want what you got. We're gonna fight for it. <laughs> exactly. That's it, man. Since caveman Bob looked over at caveman Dave and said, "Wow, you got a hot caveman wife." You got some fire and some food. Let's fight, you know. And it's we've been going at it ever since. This guy has just taken it into this professional arena where he is the pinnacle of pinnacle. He is the coach of coaches. He's the John Wooden of of MMA fight, fighting coaches. And that's why I cannot wait to get this cat on the show. What do you say, brother? Let's get Mr. Greg Jackson. So, Marcus, when you are have like a world famous, world class, amazing, insane coach that's in your presence, what happens to you, brother? Because you know what happens to me? I get fired up. I get so fired up that I'm like, I, I see literally a hundred thousand questions popping into my mind. Now I know that with only an hour to do this thing, I'm only gonna get a couple of questions going, but I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm probably gonna stalk Greg on text and ask the rest of the 100,000 questions. Right, I, th this is probably actually a bad thing because when I get excited, same thing with you, that, that fire boils up, but I, I get quiet because I no, wanna hear- No, no! I know, that's what I'm saying. This That's the problem <laughs> with doing it this way because if you got somebody in front of you who is as exceptional as something, you wanna take it all in, you don't interrupt it with your mouth, so you're saying fire. that I interrupt too much. That's what I'm hearing, but I can't help it, brother. I wasn't insinuating that, but if there's a little voice in the back of your head <laughs> telling you that I did, then there might be something to it. No, I, I think you might no, be no, right. No, you know what I'm talking Anyways, about. Anyways, let's we get him on the show. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Mr. Greg Jackson. Greg, how you doing, brother? I'm having a great morning. How are you gentlemen doing this morning? We are both above dirt. Nobody has taken a shot at us today, so it's a it's a glorious day. 
That sounds like a great day. Great day. <laughs> the sun is out. There's not a cloud in the sky. And like you said, we're all alive and breathing, so it's a good day. Awesome. That's what I love. I mean, you know what I love about you, Greg, is you got that positivity just flowing through you, man. And I'm the same way. You know, the negative insurgency is so profound, so huge all the time that if you can bring a little bit of positivity to this life, to this world, man, you're doing twice as good as the other guy. I think so. You know, it's, uh, what is that old saying? You, uh, you can't control what happens to you. You can just control your reaction to it. And uh, I think there's a lot to that. If you make uh, a I'm choice to be positive down. or negative about it, that's sure a choice. And uh, um, I, I think that if you choose to be positive, that's that warrior mentality. I think that's step one in that warrior mentality because it's real easy to get negative real quick. And we all know the salty guys that have had a lot of stuff go down and they're salty. And then there's some guys that don't let that happen and that's that's pretty cool yeah i i i think you're you're spot on all right all right now i know everybody wants to jump right into what your greatest never quit story is and all that but before we do that greg we've got to take you down this rabbit hole that we call the mad minute now in 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 the special operations world or the intelligence world when you are working with somebody and you put a mad minute on them you're gaining rapid critical intel that makes the difference between between life and death. I'm not going to say the information that we're going to seek from you is life or death, but it's sure funny as hell. So are you ready for the mad minute, Craig? I'm ready. I'm glad there's no one's life on my on the line for my advice. That's a very good <laughs> thing. So let's do it. All right, go ahead, Marcus. Fire away. All right, brother. Favorite superhero. Man, favorite superhero. Uh, you know, I'm going to go with Spider-Man because of that uh, great, uh, great power comes great responsibility. Heel. You, you uh, just... I'm going to run out and, and, and jerk the, the picture off the wall right you, now. You are. Well, it's behind you. You just hit <laughs> his favorite one, right? superhero right, right there, Greg. So now there, you two are best shot of me, there's three Spider-Men right now. <laughs> <laughs> is that ridiculous? Yeah, it is ridiculous, but I'm not going to say that openly. All right. Give us one <laughs> item on your bucket list. Oh, one item I haven't done on the bucket list. Let's see. Um... You know, in India, they have some of those uh, those uh, temples carved into the sides of rocks or uh, cliffs that taken like 18 generations to make. I haven't seen one of those yet. I'd like to see that. Something that meant so much to a people after time, after time, after time, after time, that they all kind of subsequently worked on it. And so it's not really one person's work of art, but like uh, time and people's work of art. I'd like to see that. Dude, that's hmm. cool. Now hey, you're when, you, when you're ready, I, I, I'll go with you on that one, bro. I, I love I'm an the adventurer fact that too, he man. said I, that. Yeah, that's cool. I, he didn't say, like, I want to, you know, I want to base jump off the Empire State, but he goes, I want to go see some culture. That's what I love about this guy, man. I dig it. I dig I'm it. I'm a nerd. All right, brother, first vehicle. <laughs> My first you vehicle fit right was in a, here, uh, <laughs> it was a uh, Delta 88 Oldsmobile. It was a big, giant boat. That, uh, uh, right. Of course it was. What color was it? Was it candle up red or green? It was like black. It was black. I thought I was tough, so I named it the Hawk. Because so I was like, that, that's a cool name. <laughs> <laughs> Those Delta 88s, man, they, they ride, man. You hit a bum's like rolling even bigger than a Cadillac, right? <laughs> that thing was wild. enormous. <laughs> It was right, enormous, huge. but it had a V8 in there, so I could get it up. Yeah, I could get it. It, uh, it moved, mm. though. It moved pretty good. Oh, that's awesome. All right. Two, two all door right. or four door? Uh, was was a it a two door or four door, oh, door yeah, Delta? Huge. It was a four door giant. Oh, I'm telling you, one. that thing yeah, was a boat. real big one. <laughs> but it, was, it was a great first car because if I totaled it or whatever, the whole thing was made of steel. So anything else was going to feel it. Sure, yeah, I, exactly. You're not totaling that. Whatever you ran into was going to be totaled. Yeah, exactly. Delta Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Exactly. If you had to get in a fight with one, which one would you pick? Sylvester Stallone. I think or, he knows uh, both these guys. Or, or, uh, he does. Oh, okay. Sylvester Stallone or Arnold Schwarzenegger. And now we're talking in Rambo and Commando days. During their prime. Well, I watched both of those movies and I... Uh, I saw, you know, Rambo, he get hit and kind of hurt and stuff. He was super tough, but, uh, man, nothing could touch the commando guy. I remember that guy assaulting a house by standing in front of it, just laying down fire. And, like, I don't know, it was 100 dudes shooting back at him and no one hit him. So I'm going to have to go with the – Throwing with, saw blades. With Stallone because that the other guy is some – like, that's some miracle stuff right there. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go uh, – <laughs> we'll take on Rambo. I'm not touching that commando guy. Jeez. I love it. I love it. All right. Favorite movie character you'd like to play out in real life? Movie character I'd like to play out in real life. 
I think the the uh, the head samurai and the seventh samurai, whose his name in the movie eludes me at the moment, but awesome. that guy was really cool. Yeah, he was awesome. I love that. It's one of my favorite movies. I'd love to be that guy. Uh, all right, last question. Uh, it, if you could be president for one day and do something big, what would it be? Ooh, wow, one day. President for a day. What would I do? Wow, that's a really good question. I, yeah, yeah free for all. <laughs> that's a really good question. That's a really good question. Matt Best from Article 15 Clothing said he'd cause an international incident by sleeping with some other world leader's wife. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds very much like God, Matt. Yes, that. indeed. He, yeah, that's been spot on. You know what I would do is I would, uh, I think I'd make everybody go skydiving, have a federal requirement to go skydiving one time just to get everybody kind of centered back into uh the real deal and and get afraid and conquer something and uh, yeah life on yeah, earth yeah, i think that i think that i think that I would be it. like just That's to kind great. of pull everybody back into into the stuff that matters uh without actually doing anything else that would endanger them further but uh even just the tandem i mean it doesn't have to be a solo <laughs> you could just tandem it but i think that's what i would have everybody do i'd make it a federal requirement that everybody had to do at least one I love it. I love it. All right. On that I mean, note, it seemed like a big deal to a lot of people, but, you know, I don't like jumping out of airplanes, so I, <laughs> that means I'd have to go, right? That's, it does give you Because you, you hit unique, the ground yeah, at, like, yeah, you get a unique perspective on, yeah. on Earth when you yeah. leave it. Yeah. And, and even it's, an airplane doesn't give you perspective, man. When the wind hits you in the face, <laughs> that's, that's part I didn't like, getting slapped in the face. Right? Once you're out, it's fine. Just the initial. The hmm. initial, like, pop. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, that is the Mad Minute on the TDQ podcast, Greg. Thank you for your participation. We we enjoyed the answers severely. But the reason why listeners come to this show from around the world is because of the incredible guests that we have on and, and the information that they're willing to share to help people, to help these uh, wonderful people that write into us all the time say, you know, hey, your show has made a difference in my life. And, and, and Greg, we're really proud and honored to have you on. You are at the, Absolutely. the, the top of your game. You really are an amazing coach and, and just a, a true master of your profession. And so what we would love to do is pivot now and have you share with our listeners your greatest never quit story or stories. Okay, so that that is an interesting question because I or or um, an interesting conversation. I think that we all, anybody in a kind of our lifestyle, in, in that kind of uh, be it gladiatorial uh, or uh, you know uh, special operator, whatever, even military, infantry, whatever, anybody that's kind of that that uh, I like to call it the alpha lifestyle. I think there's something in you or in your past that defines that, right? So we all have stories. We've all got stuff that that. Uh, uh, you know, that, that kind of comes at us, life comes at us. So I guess what my thing is, is I don't have one story. I mean, I have my story, right? I was raised a skinny white kid in the South Valley of Albuquerque, New Mexico. I was pretty much the only white kid in the whole school. And, and that's what started me on my path. But I think everybody's mm -hmm. got a story like that. I think the important thing is to look at kind of the underlying structure of what makes some people different, their stories different, because there's a lot of people that don't have a success story when you have all these odds kind of stacked against you early on. And I was just, it's funny that we brought this up. I was just thinking the other day, it really isn't about not quitting. I mean, sometimes it is, right? Like you get that, you're in any kind of a fight and there's that door and you can kind of just step out of that door and, and, uh, and you're out of the fight and, and, and there, that's always available right. to you. But I don't think that's what makes success. I mean, sometimes it does. Obviously, sometimes you make it and, and, and you're successful and stuff. But I think consistently, and for situations, obviously that works, but consistently, if you, if you have this part of life come at you and that part of life comes at you, because it's not just about one challenge that you face, right? So you grow up hard, you grow up mean, whatever it is, or, or you grow up fine. And then you go through your hard mean later on, or it's both, but it's pretty consistent. Like life likes to, I hope I can cuss on this show. Life likes to throw shit sandwiches at you all the time. Like that's yeah. life's job. It wakes up in the morning and throws a shit sandwich and there's nobody that has it perfect. Um, so for me, my thing has always been it, 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 the never quit story is great. And there's times where like just not quitting is victory, but consistently, I think it's being able to thrive where others suffer. I think that's the big, a, a big deal of, of success is, awesome. is 
that is just being able to say, you know what, we were like talking about it earlier, that positivity. You don't have to be super positive all the time, I don't think, but you definitely have to have that ability to thrive where others are having, you know, stumbling and having a hard time. Um, and I think that's that, what I always call that warrior mentality. So you mm-hmm. can have any story, anything that happens to you, no matter what, and, and then you have to deal with the aftermath of that and, and the next thing that comes at you and the aftermath of that. But that, that warrior mentality, I think, always has to stay the same, to be able to thrive where any other person put in that situation, you know, it wouldn't thrive. They would have a hard time with it. They would, you know, do this, they would do that. But to see people rise from that to thrive, I think that's who inspires us. Exactly. So maybe the goal should be not quitting as, as a base, but if you really want to be consistent about it, and at least in my opinion, what do I know about anything? It, it is actually trying to thrive in those environments, in environments where only somebody insane would thrive there. But that's a warrior mentality. Is, is, and it doesn't necessarily have to be like, you know, in a firefight or a fist fight or whatever. It can be however life comes at you or, you know, uh, the before and afters of those things. Um, all the things that nobody thinks about. Uh, I, I think that, if you if you have that mentality, if you're like, you know what, no, I'm going to do better than everybody anybody that's ever done in this position. It, it, just coming at it that way, I think it's so important. And if you don't have that, it's so easy to do. You just make that decision. Like I think people read a lot of self help books and they read a lot of this stuff and that stuff, like looking for those answers. But the answers is just an easy decision. You just say, no, I'm going to do this. And even if it doesn't work out right away, you just keep at it. You keep at it. You keep trying to thrive when everybody ex- else expects you to suffer. I guess that would be my my never quit philosophy. Well, it, it, it's really interesting that you go towards the warrior mentality, and it, and it ha- it's relative to consistency, right? Right. One of the things that we were talking about prior to coming on with you, and we talk about consistency all the time, right? As it relates to your training, as it relates to the people that you have around you, and the, the relationships that you build, and then your focus on purpose, that longevity towards reaching some goal that's fulfilling not only you know as a uh, as a reached goal but the the process of getting there one of the questions that we were throwing back and forth was all right that war men, warrior mentality can it be taught greg when you, let's say you have a young person that walks into your gym that's watched you know all these amazing ufc fights and all these other bellator and all and titan fc and and they've been watching their whole lives and they walk in, they say, all right, Mr. Jackson, you know, please teach me the warrior mentality. Is that possible? Uh, I think it is. It, it's just willpower to want to learn it. I think that it's motivation. Um, in, in my experience, as long as you have the motivation to do that. And again, it really is about consistency because what I get a lot of is the guys that come in and they'll say, I'm your next world champion. I'm your next this. I'm your next that. And what they've already done is mentally masturbated about it so much. They've already succeeded. They've already been there. <laughs> they don't think about the process. They're thinking about, oh, this is what it's going to feel like when I'm the champion of the world. And this is, you know, I've watched the movies. And so it's just this like success masturbation that happens over and over and over, which is different <laughs> for me than visualization. And then they oh. they like they go hard for a week or two. They figure out that, man, getting punched in the face every day is really difficult. This hurts. This isn't like the movies. This isn't what I thought it would be. And then, you know, off they go. And the next little group comes in and says, I'm going to be the next world champion. So that mentality is different, I think, than actually wanting to be a warrior. The warrior is like, well, success is going to come if I take care of everything else. And, And when I see people like that, that are just worried about training, acquiring knowledge, pushing hard, I say, well, this, that mentality, I think you can teach the warrior process too. So when I take these guys running on the hills and I make them super tired, I mean, we, you know, we all go through that. And you have somebody build you back up either with negative or positive reinforcement, whatever works the best for you. Um, and you, so the first time you would say you run some hills, the first time you do it, you're dead. The second time you've done it before, you know what that's like. It's okay. You know, you die, you puke, whatever. It's not a big deal. The third time, by the, by the tenth time, it's pretty normal. Like, oh, this is what we do. Like, here's what we do. And if you can stay consistent like that, I think that you, you get that warrior mentality. So I, mm-hmm. in me, in my opinion, the warrior mentality is just consistently having that desire to push yourself. And if you have that, you can absolutely learn to be a stronger, better warrior. I've seen people, I mean, you see a lot of fighters like that. They, they start out raw, they develop. Maybe they quit early on, but, you know, they keep coming back and keep coming back, and pretty soon they get uh, a lot stronger and a lot tougher. 
So can That's you cool. teach desire? I don't think so, but I think you can definitely teach that warrior mentality. It just by having a good culture around you and, and having a good guy that says, okay, yes, this is going to suck. You're going to puke. You're going to, it's going to feel like you want to die and then you're going to do it again and again and again. But as long as you show up with a will to do that again, you're going to be a great warrior. Well, it's amazing that you talk about it that way because, you know, you, you talk about culture, you talk about what Marcus and I talk about all the time, the acceptance of the pain, right? The process of pain, which shapes the will, the willingness to sacrifice, the willingness to be humble, the willingness to train harder. And mm -hmm. what I, what I was really cool, and we, we were talking about this as well, is the culture that you guys are able to create where that success masturbation that you talk about is checked at the door, you know, by that wonderful, you know, s s sign you have written out on that front pillar, as well as the rules that you guys adhere by, you know, and, and, and that visualization, that, that, that whole cultural process, how do you guys keep that intact? Is it, is it done by the success of your great fighters like John Jones or Andre or That's Holly? a great question because in our community, we have all the guys want us to do well. And, and same way in the camp, but there can only be one champ, right? Right. So how do, you, how, do you, who, who, how do you keep that cultural connectivity in check and, and going and moving forward? That's actually a really good question. So um, obviously, it's a lot of maintenance from the top down, which is us down. But a lot of it also is the teammates checking the teammates. You know what I mean? If you're getting, uh, uh, sure. if you're getting, you know, this, if everybody's going to look down on you because you got hit with a body shot and you couldn't continue, you, you, that's fine for that time. But you'll say to yourself, in order to be a part of this culture, all these guys judge me for, you know, quitting when I take a body shot. So I'm going to work to, toughen my body up and my mind so that I won't quit to that. So that culture kind of pulls everybody up. So it's a little bit of negative, but a lot of positive too. And, and you have to have, I think a balance of, of that uh, negative and positive stuff. Um, but it, it, it takes a constant maintenance because if you let, you know, a few bad apples in there and, and where, okay, you know, just banging, not being intelligent, but just banging it out is okay. Or, you know, quitting is okay. Or any of these things become the norm. I think that really ruins, at least in, in our gymnasium, it, 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 uh, it ruins the culture. So we have to be very careful of that element. And a lot of it, again, comes from us, but a lot of it's a teammate checking teammate kind of a deal. Because like you said, you have so many things pulling you out of the process of combat. You've got pain, you've got fatigue, you've got in, in, in gladiatorial fighting, the pressure of being judged by others is huge because what you're, you know, you're fighting another uh, well-prepared opponent yeah. in front of millions of people. So you have to deal with that pressure a lot. Um, so it, have all these things trying to pull you out of being a hunter, being uh, pulling you out of, of being victorious. So training that, keeping yourself in that process, no matter what. And then the culture, you know, kind of making those parameters like, no, when you feel this wanting to pull you out of the process, you can't quit. You have to stay in that process of hunting the people down um, or your opponent down. Uh, I think is very important reinforcing because if you don't have that reinforcement, then there's no consequences to you quitting. Oh well, I'll just quit. You know, I had that this hard, this hard, this hurt. It's hard. Whatever. Um, I'll just I'll just quit. Um, then I think that that uh, makes a, a, the culture that you're trying to strive for with success. That's definitely a detriment to that. Wow. That's what makes that life so difficult is the, the existentials, right? The outside influences the, in this day and age is hey, you're a great fighter and everyone loves the champ, right? I mean, I don't even care if, uh, what was the last huge match that came up? I mean, when you start to see pe celebrities in the audience that don't even know what boxing or yeah. MMA is, I mean, <laughs> you, you guys have done something. I mean, you create something, those those warriors that go into the arena, that's been around long before. It's a long time. <laughs> yeah. Everything, right? Yeah. It'll, it'll, it'll always be around the gladiators getting in there and punching it out. In this day and age with TV and everybody checking your stats and your the length of your hand and everything, they come into play and tell them, like, man, you're just not built to be a champion. All that stuff that, that would, you would only usually hear in the gym, right, is all over the place once you step out of there. And the hardest thing about getting into a fight is walking down that row. I mean, that's, that. It's it's you know the I mean? first I mean, five minutes. You get in there a, and you get yeah. hit the first time, yeah. man. We're fighting. That's it. It's on. All right, a chess match. But yeah. <laughs> I mean, the stones to walk down the the ramp, man. That's it's the build up before we do anything. You know what I'm talking about? It's it's just like the gravy gets caught in your throat. Everything comes into play, man. And it's the fear part. 
that we always talk about. And that's when it comes you know, to your camp's so important is, is right. cultivating that. And, it, and that is such a good point. Um, both positively and negatively. One, one unexpected thing that I ran into early on was the flip side to that. So you always have this negative, you know, everybody's judging you this and that. But then when you're, like you're saying, when you're the champ and stuff, you have people like, telling you you're a genius every day. You're the baddest man alive. No, no, no. So you get that. <laughs> without that cultural check on the, the other side, you get enormous egos. Because it's not like anybody can do that for a month. Like, oh, wow, well, you know, you, you know, you pretend to be humble. Yeah, thank you very much. Oh, I'm a genius, blah, 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 blah. I'm super tough. But I, a year a year and a half of every month, hundreds of people going on the internet and saying, man, you're my hero. You're my inspiration. And I can get to you too. If you don't check it. So just right. being able to deal, having a culture that allows you to like, okay, you know, you're not, you are not Jesus. You are not the second Messiah. You are a normal person. You're a great fighter, but keep it in check. I, I think is, is, uh, is very important to have that, not just for the negative culture, like reinforcement stuff, but to their, like to make sure that no, you you are in fact a human being and you need, need to maintain that humility or you're going to get run over. Oh, well, that's what the greatest part about having a good camp, just like, and just like you're stable that you got a, a lot of champions running around there. They still have to come back to train during the week and get their ass handed to them. I mean, I haven't regularly. Exactly. And that's how exactly. you stay sharp. In the minute yep. they, you know how it works, they separate themselves from the camp because I'm the champ. You're not good enough. I don't want to blah, 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 this, that, and the other. You're gone. It's over well, out there. And you're going to be whipping your butt in the ring. The, the kid under has been under watching you the whole time and studying you just like a, right. like a god because exactly. you're the champ. And that's the way it, it is, man. I'm training to beat you. I may be training over here in my own little way, man. I'm way behind you. I'm over here on just doing my the, the little stuff that you did years and years and the years hunger. ago. Right. But I'm hungry, for, right? Yeah. Now, if we've how do you how do you guys foster because i know it seems like and 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 you know i I've, I've i don't know much about uh mike winkle john but it seems like you guys have kind of different approaches on coaching but the same philosophies how do you right. guys do you guys get around with an individual or with a group or when you're working with somebody to to pull out the the their their to elevate their performance thresholds, do you concentrate on the individual or do you use a greater cultural philosophy or a greater philosophy of of the norms that work? How does that work? Well, that's actually a good question too. It is a, it's actually a mix. Uh, you have have to focus on the individual because different people react to different, you know, stimuli. But we also then have that kind of cultural parameters that, that everybody adheres to. But after everybody's kind of in the same modality, right, you're not going to quit. You're going to be tough. You're going to be consistent. You're going to keep your head on your shoulders. Then it's a very individualized thing. Some individuals will excel in some areas and, and uh, not do as well in others. There's uh, just not just their mental game, but their physical game as well. Some are amazing athletes that are so explosive. Some are more grinders and they'll just outdo you um, in the third round. So you just have to identify who it is and, and then work with that. Even personality type. Some people really respond well to being yelled at, like really negative. Like Andre Arlovsky is a great example of that. If you yell at Andre, he, he completely responds well. Some fighters <laughs> don't like that at all. They want to be a little more positive and, and pushed up. So it's just about, uh, you know, like Sun Tzu said, know yourself and know your enemy. And know yourself means knowing your men. Well, I, I love that you just made that pivot towards Sun Tzu because one of the one of the coolest things that I found when I was when I was doing my research on you, Greg, was there was a, a video out there where you've got these four dudes on your wall in your office, which is Ernest Shackleton, Sir Ernest Shackleton, Genghis Khan, George Washington, and Abe Lincoln, and you know that's that's there's a, a an incredible variance of of influence there. But what what really was cool to me is how you tied together, you extrapolated the real positives of how they inspired you to formulate a unique way and approach that you have towards coaching. Can you expand on that a little bit and 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 then see how that relates to identifying multiple different characteristics in an individual and pulling out their greatest attributes. That's another very insightful question. Uh, the, I think the thing with those four guys is, and, and this for me is anybody 
anywhere. There's been so many people that came before us that are so much more than we ever were. Amen. You know what I mean? They've gone through hard times. They've gone through the real deal. Like I would want to be one one hundredth as good at their job as I am at mine. Just they're amazing. And they, uh, so that's inspirational for me, like to read about somebody that's so smart and, and, you know, has been through the, the grinder and really come out on top of it and, and was successful is great just personally. Cause my biggest enemy is always burnout. So the ability to, to kind of look at all burnout? those, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You said, Greg, you said burnout is your greatest enemy burnout. Yeah. Being burned out because it's, if there's fights every, for just the MMA side of it, there's fights every single week. We have probably about a hundred pros in there right now. So it's every week, fight after fight after fight, this opponent, that opponent, UFC, Bellator, the one FC, all these organizations all over the world. So it's not just like uh, an everyday thing. It's an every week, every month. Like there's no break. It's a relentless grind for the last 25 years of just, you know, the fight after fight and wow. this opponent, that opponent, this opponent, that opponent. So my biggest enemy in that area is burnout. Like you get up and you're apathetic um, or, you know, you just don't care anymore. Like then you're no good to anybody. And that's what they're really dangerous because you're holding power, but you're just, you're apathetic. You're, you're just not really, um, you know, you're, uh, you're not paying attention. Yeah. Don't care. You're dead. Um, and, right. And that's doing a huge disservice. So, like, you know, that's just you. Okay. That's fine. But when you're a leader, that's the most dangerous thing ever because you're, you're letting everybody down and that's a big deal. So that's my enemy. Burnout is my biggest enemy. So I have to have constantly try to find inspiration, you know, in history or wherever I can find it. Um, I'm always looking for that. Wow. That thing to get me a little motivated. Like, let's try this. Let's push that. So extrapolating that stuff out of those guys allows me to do that. Those guys are inspiring to me. Um, and I think the same process that I look at fighters, I look for their positive and negative qualities and say, okay, I need to shore up these negative qualities and enhance their positive qualities. But it's just that, that, uh, the, the ability to analyze and, and extrapolate from situations, not just in itself, but how that relates to you. And so that ability to do that, um, has allowed me to stay inspired. And that's why those guys are on the walls because I have such great admiration for them. Yeah. Well, I, awesome. I, I think it's, you know, we, we have the same thing in our, in the teams, right? And for us, a lot of our great inspiration comes from, uh, you know, in many cases, our, our greatest warriors, uh, <clears throat> you know, recently we oh. just lost another guy named Ryan Owens on a, on an assault in, in Yemen. Mm -hmm. uh, back in May, we lost a guy named Charles Keating in Syria. And, and for us, you know, we have this perpetual, motivation based on the existential reality of of life and death as warriors and on on the battlefield and 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 that is uh, you know it's 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 fulfilling it's always there cuz we know the next guys you know un, you know fortunate death for us you know dying doing what you love but it's there and it keeps that drive going how do you instill well, before you yeah go burnout happens in Everybody, every person's job and everybody's like absolutely when, when he was talking about that i i heard that term the first time uh and obviously in the fighting den but at the hospitals when we were doing the rotation yeah absolutely and it's the crazy you wouldn't think that when the blood and broken bones and and you know death is present right in fighting and what we do and then the hospitals and stuff like that and it's not burning out means you're still there going through the motions but the enthusiasm and it, it, there might be false motivation, a false motivation, we yeah, just call it absolutely. that kind of deal. And it, it, man, you can get stuck in that mentally. You can be in a burnout stage for a while yep. if, if you don't know what's going on, especially if you're the head guy. Absolutely. That's why it's good when you get those the younger guys coming in that are hungry, man. That guy reminds you of what's going down and, and the good times. And you live, uh, a champion lives through the younger guys coming up as well. The pressure. The, yeah, the, everything that goes yeah. into that, training them and then. If he's a true champion, when it's time to when he does get beat, he sticks around and passes it down. Just we we keep our guys in the community, and then we pay respect to them. They're on our, on our walls, and they do the same thing. You talk to any fighter, he's going to say, "I got into this because of Muhammad Ali." I mean, it's usually you go back, right? right. It's not the guy who's who's up on, on top right now. He's just right. the mark, right? right? He's he's what I'm looking at right now, and that's the same way it is. Uh, for us, you know, when we were watching all the documentaries, we knew everything from the present to where we're at. Yep. And then all we're doing is widening the road each time. How, that's right. a good question then. But the Greg. baseline's the same. No, you're 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 on point right there, Marcus. Is is and Greg, how do you 
when you when a fighter either gets in burnout or they stop losing focus on the bitter bigger picture, which is the journey to the belt, the journey to the fight, how do you correct that? For me, it's just you need time away from whatever battlefield you're in. You need a little bit of time away. You need a little bit of a break, um, which is why I'll tell fighters, you know what? You don't need to be fighting for another six months at least. You need to go home, wow. enjoy your family, back off a little bit, and remember why you do this. You know what I mean? Like in Cuba, that's been a very successful formula because there are warriors inside. They've just been pushed too hard. There's just too long. It's, it's too much. But when they back off, they don't have to be there. I don't have to be there anymore. And that's the nice thing about fighters. Um, and all of a sudden they're like, Hey, I, I actually do this for a reason. Cause I really love it. Like I love every part of it. And, and you, they find that love again and they're able to kind of pull themselves back in and say, okay, now I'm good. I'm, I'm good. I, you know, I went through a little time there, but for me, it's just, it's, it's, you need time away from that, from the stimulus that has got you there. Um, if you don't have the luxury of having time away, then you have to do what I do or what you guys do. And that's just data mine. Basically you're looking for, people yeah. that have done similar things or things that you can identify with before you and say, listen, <laughs> my, the hardest part of my day is what flying on an airplane. They bring me drinks, like settle down. I'm not like George Washington's <laughs> revolutionary army, like walking with blood in the snow with no shoes on, like settle down Jackson. I think you can handle it. So just right. getting slapped in the face by like <laughs> the real men that have been through it. And, and you know what, calm yourself a little bit. I don't care how bad it is. Someone's been through worse. That that's a big deal uh, for me, for me personally. So that helps me out a lot. Just kind of keeping myself in check going, yeah, settle down. You got a good life. That, that's cool. That's really cool. You know, those guys who thinking about this, the, the champions, there, there's a difference. So you can tell the guys who actually have that warrior path, the creed that's what they are they're a warrior and so the guy who's fighting and wants to become a champ because as soon as he gets the belt on the champ it's, it stops right there right i heard a long time you're supposed to fight through the belt right you, because you start right. the path to being a warrior in the beginning to climb a mountain you have to start at the bottom well right. when you become the champ instead of thinking of it like this is where i'm i'm at this is i'm holding it right now you're still climbing the belt right. is a stage and what do they say the the person who gets his ass whipped the most is that first degree black belt you know enough just to get your butt whipped right? <laughs> that's right, that's right. a lot of people get hung up on that deal because they've obtained that and everyone this is old school traditional martial arts and this i remember seeing this happen but you know they'll strap that on then you won't see him again i'm black belt i'm good to go but then right. you got the guys who well there's it's not really about the belt right that just holds your pants up yeah it's about the teacher in front of you and the and the path the, the way of life Right, absolutely. Martial artists and warriors, it's outside the gym as well as as inside. And the guys that look through the belt, like this is just a stage. I I, I passed it. Yeah, I hold it. So in everybody else's reality, I'm the champ. But in my mind, I'm looking way past that. And they set those stages in their life. And then once they obtain it, it's when you shift. You hear about the the samurai. They were they had their warrior. They were warriors. And then once they pass through that, then you go to the enlightenment where you're a Teacher. out in the guard. Yeah, and yeah. then ultimately when the the teacher is ready the student will appear so right. he's just sitting around doing his poetry or his gardening and then next thing you know it's time to pass it down that's cool absolutely well, greg i got a question in terms of passing that enlightenment down right and 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 especially when guys move into the the top of their game or girls like holly or whatever and they explode into the fame, the business, the negative insurgency, I call, where, you know, they're just being bombarded by all of this really negativity, this profound negativity. What do you do to keep them focused? What do you do to say, hey, this is, this is the objective, not all this. How do you flush out the noise? I think that's a... a a process of just keeping reminding them. I mean, that's your job as a guide is to remind them of what's important, but also having a place where they can go to with like-minded people that don't really care about all that. So, uh, you know, if you're, if you're on a losing streak or you're having a tough time, everybody else in your world isn't going to understand that because they don't, they haven't lived it. So you're going to deal with, why don't you retire? Or, you know, I'm really worried about you, you know, taking all these shots or whatever it is. Um, and that that's a lot of that that negativity. Then you go on the internet and you're like you're done, you know, da, 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 all this stuff. 
like having a place where you go to and there's a bunch of other fighters around you and they don't really care about it. It's that culture we're talking about. That doesn't matter what anybody else thinks we're here for us and uh, they can be worried about us or they can, you know, do all this stuff. But these are all like-minded people that in this culture, like we just leave that on the outside. Like we're here to have a great time and cool. do what we love to do. Uh, I think that's what really combats it is. I think if you were by yourself and alone, and having all this negative stuff pushed on you, I think that's, that's hard to do. You've got to find, in my opinion, you have to find like-minded people. Okay, here's some more positive people, even if it's two or three of them. Here's some more positive people. We don't care about other people judging us or whatever they think that, that they understand about our reality. We just worry about what we're doing and let that stuff go. Because if you, I mean, if you take, the old saying goes, right, if you take time to bleed every little arrow shot your way, you're not going to have time for anything else but bleeding. Like you've got to get in there and, and have Amen. fun and win the fight and do all that stuff. So that those little negative barbs that, that are shot at you all the time. I think those are what you just, you just brush them off. You have to, but doing that by yourself is very hard. If you've got two or three guys that are in that same mentality of, yeah, whatever, uh, that's made such a difference to me. So just finding some like-minded positive people is important. And especially as a fighter, it's, it's imperative. Uh, that's it's really cool. Exactly. We do it, well, every day, all day in our community because it's one of those deals where it's easy to forget if you start paying attention to the white noise. Because in our community, for instance, if you, we'll be sitting around in the platoon space and a guy will be like, man, you are a terrible shot. How did that even happen? You know, <laughs> the bottom line is you have to be an expert marksman to get into the SEAL teams, right? So you, this dude is an expert marksman. Then you've got the rest of us going, Man, you're a terrible shot. Dude. Hit the side I, of I, I am bar. the slowest runner probably to ever to come through the SEAL teams, right? Yes, you are. <laughs> and I'm probably actually I'm probably slow for civilian. We shouldn't use that analogy. But no, anyways, let's where I was going down. with that is <laughs> love is blind. All right. Love is blind. <laughs> it, I mean, we re, you got that reinforcement yes. from our camp. Even from our guys, it's negative, right? Even when it's negative, it's a positive thing. We have completely transitioned over to a different way of thinking. It's one of those deals when people are like, uh, you know, we got a dark sense of humor. You wouldn't understand it. And they'll be like, well, I got a dark sense of humor. You know, tell me about it. I'm like, if I have to, I just, I just told you, man, can't explain it to you. You yeah. get it. That kind of deal. Exactly. Because of the, we get our motivation through negative reinforcement. I mean, we transitioned over to that. And even in the fight game, you're getting your, you, I mean, you're literally getting punched in the face and your corner's going, great job. You're doing what, you know, that kind of crap, man. That fires you up, man. Like, Hit me again. Obviously, coach is digging this. <laughs> so, I mean, without that, I think we, we would just fade into oblivion. You, you just, you wouldn't have. You won't. You're, yeah, you don't have the mental exist, capacity. Right? We, we only exist with each other. Exactly. Greg, I got a question for you based on that, what Marcus was talking about there. And, and, it, and it's relative to where you become a different breed once you get set on that warrior mentality, that warrior path, if you will, the gladiatorial spirit. You, you move along. But there is a time where people move and become the outliers, the champions in your world. Can you, do you see that happen uh, and, and if so, can you give us a specific story about a particular guy or woman you trained where all of a sudden they were kind of a, a good, you know, really above average fighter, but then something clicked and they became champions. Can you, can you describe that for us? Yeah, I think that's a, um, that's a very interesting thing. I think that, um, it, a lot of that is the mental game of just having the confidence to do it. Um, I think that people you get like, look at, uh, Tyrone Woodley is a great example of that. Tyrone's champion. Now, um, he has been beaten before, you know, uh, and, and convincingly, but that never, that never stopped him. And then that's what I call turning your corner. At some point you just turn your corner. And I think what I was in, and man, this is so, you're just bringing this up. It's so funny. I was just thinking of it last week, turning a corner seems to me to be, as I've done this over the years, a, an element of fearlessness. And I don't mean like, not like I, I feel no fear. Cause obviously unless you're like a two percenter, everybody feels fear. And that's a good thing, I think. But, um, it, there seems to be like it a, is. a, a ability to just, again, it's that thriving where others are suffering, where other people are suffering. Suddenly there's just a confidence there. There's, there's a, um, a, uh, a I, I don't want to say it's like, um, it's not even like false confidence. It's like, I'm just going to, I know I'm going to win. They go in there and, and they're, and they're so into the, pro 
us and so worried about hunting the other guy down that they forget to not succeed, if that makes any sense at all. And John Jones is a great example of that. He'll just go in there and we get the way I coach him, we give him parameters and then just let him be creative. Cause he's pretty fearless in the cage. Most of the time, like just gets in there and he'll try stuff and, you know, he walks around on his hands and knees and when you know, crawls around and you just does weird <laughs> stuff, but that's him. Being you describe him as an artist, right? Right. And, and he is, but that's him being comfortable. So he's fearless. If I say, you know, do a backflip off the cage, he'll be like, okay, well, I'll do a backflip off the cage. And so if you're able to process <laughs> in that situation, process like that, where it's not that, that, that kind of class, which in friction, that, that fog of war is kind of pulling you out of being creative and hunting. Um, that seems to be, to be a, a big factor. And sometimes it just takes people a while to get there. And then they've done it enough times and they've been pretty successful. That's for most of the time where they just like, you know what? It's, it's my time now. They make this conscious decision. And then they, when I say it, they turn their corner and you see them just starting to, to grow and really expand. And, it, and a lot of times it happens before they're, they're champions, but uh, it, it's a really cool uh, process to see. I think yeah, it's we, one of the greatest things ever. Yeah, I mean, we used enough. to see it a lot. Go ahead, bro. All our battle rhythm. Yeah. I mean, and then it happens even just as a Navy SEAL too. I was thinking about what you were talking, bro. I remember through Buds, STT, all that stuff. Actually, well after the first deployment, you're like, I'm going to get rid of me today. I'm not good enough to be here kind of deal. I'm in my locker, you know, making sure everything. And then I don't even know when it happened, but you get to a point to where during the workups and whatnot, instead of being nervous every phase, like when we get in the water yeah. or, or whatever it is, back on the range, you're so comfortable, you're just, you become... You've become a fighter. You've become a Navy. That's what that is. That's what's happened. You've actually transitioned to what it is you are. So there's no worry about you f falling down on the job or, or not doing something because it's exactly what you are. It's your baseline, and it's beat down into there through blood and sweat and tears, and, and, your, and your buddies reinforce that. I mean, they hold that ring together. And I, I had a buddy of mine I grew up with. His name's Colin Edwards. He's world champion superbike racer, man. And and he had one of those moments. I'll never forget. When you said that, He, I remember this. He goes, I just figured out how I'm going to be a champion. I mean, it was one of those deals. Like, he just figured out clear. how to do something on that bike, shift his body. He goes, I just figured out how to be a champion. And he was. Wow. Yep. That's, That's it. cool. So it does happen to, to guys. I mean, well, it, it literally is a, uh, whoa, what just happened here? And then some guys go that confidence they, that they become it and they don't realize it until yeah. one day you're like, man, I like you, you know, as well as that, we were talking about guys like, man, do you shoot every day? I'm like, nope. I know when I grab that pistol, my mechanics, I can go through it to get the job done. Yeah. I know I, if I had to get up and run, I know how many miles I can do that kind of thing. We've, we've right. done it so much and it's just so much a part of you that just like throwing that punch, man, your body falls into it. Your body knows it. Well, the Once road your mind yeah, and your body road. work together. Yeah. That cohesive thing, that's, absolutely. That means this yeah. just become whatever it is you're trying to obtain. You folk, that energy is all synced up. Yep, it's all synced yep, up. Yeah, I love that concept, man. And so, Greg, what, the last thing I want to I want to ask you before we we were let you go. And by the way, you know, if it were Marcus is in my decision, we keep you on for another five hours. But <laughs> I'm your I know boy. you're no incredibly worries. busy. <laughs> incredibly busy. Hopefully, in the future, we'll get you back on, oh, and, 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 and we can get into some. Because I know your your knowledge base is just endless, and I think you have so much more to give our audience. But but before before you go, what we always like to try and do, and and I saw you know I saw this. You always you keep it simple in the gym with your fighters. You say, hey, work. Let's work on three things. Let's really get down three things. Let's get these three things, and then we'll go to the next three. And and you keep it in these nice chunks so people can process it neurologically they can process it physically and they can process it emotionally what are three things that you could share with our listeners to get them going to to begin to prepare them you know as they you know start to engage in their training for the fight of their life well i guess the the first thing is is a decision like um the, of the of that triumvirate, I would say the first and most important is a decision, and it's just that. It's just a decision. And it, it, how can I put it? And you, you guys will both know it instinctively because you've been through what you've been through. But there's a decision that you have to make, and then once that decision is made, it, 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 jumping out of an airplane, like you're saying, but the most nervous part is when you're climbing. If you're you know here in New Mexico, where you climb out on a wing, or you know you're jumping out or whatever. 
that that decision right there. But once you pass that decision point, or you're walking down a ramp to the fight, but then you know when you made it into the cage, well, the decision was made. There, there's nothing you can do except make that decision. Like I wish there was a way I could tell people, you know, here's how you make the decision, but you can't. Like you just have to say, I am going to do this. That's step one. And if you don't do that, everything you do subsequently doesn't matter because you're not in the oh. fight. So the first decision is to actually then say, I, uh, I need to be in the fight. The second thing I would say is map out a methodology just for success. So first you made a decision, like I'm going to do this no matter what. Let's say I'm going to lose 30 pounds. I'm going to do it. Like that's it. The decision has been made. I am going to lose 30 pounds and I'm not going to stop even if I fail over and over again until I lose 30 pounds. That decision has now been made. I cannot go back on it. Like there's no door that's going to let me out of it. There's nothing that'll do. So that's one. Two, you have to have a methodology to say, okay, now here's how I'm going to do it. I am going to you know, eat sweet potatoes seven times a day, whatever you're going to do. <laughs> then the third one I would say is after you have that is uh, relentlessness. You just have to mm -hmm. be relentless because that's what we were talking about at the beginning of the show, I think. Like everything is going to... Um, all of a sudden you run out of money or the people that were selling you, selling you sweet potatoes aren't there anymore. There's going to be these obstacles in the way. So then it's just that, that absolute relentlessness of accepting failure and pushing through it, accepting setbacks and pushing through it, accepting that even people on your own side will make your job more difficult to do and pushing through it. So uh, that yeah. would be my trial for it is, is the decision that cannot be reversed methodology and relentlessness. Well, I, I tell you what, those are pretty awesome, brother. <laughs> you can't get better than that kickstart right there, dude. Right. Well, listen, man. I, you know, I, 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 I know you. Uh, you're just. It, I, I don't know how to say this enough, but you, you you're so humble in and how you describe yourself. But brother, you, your your focus, your the intellectualism which which you approach coaching and inspiring and mentoring and. And, and creating this amazing positive uh, culture at Jackson Wink Jim, man, it, it's inspiring to me, brother. And and I just feel so again honored and privileged to have you on the show. Yeah, really, thanks, brother, for coming oh, on, man. Man, that you guys would even call me inspiring is a huge honor for me. Believe me, I'm just some skinny white kid from the South Valley, so I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, we we wish you all the best. We're praying for your continued success, and man, uh, we you know hopefully in the future we can get you back on. To, to talk more about what you know works. Anytime, brother. You guys are, are anytime you guys want me, I'm on 100%. Awesome. Thanks so much, Thanks, Greg. God bless you. Oh, man. man. Thank you, guys. God bless you guys. Okay, take care, guys. See you. Take care. I, I told you, brother. I told you. I, I, that guy, <laughs> that guy is smart. And oh. I mean, he approaches this in 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 a depth and sophistication that is so powerfully unique. That's what makes him as good as he is. Dude. Sure. What do you think of the fighters now? So they can sit and listen to that all day and be able to do what they do. So I mean, those guys in there, are sharp, smart. I mean, well, it makes perfect sense to go back and process what Tate talked about on the show. Tate Fletcher. And to go back and listen to Tim Kennedy and Andre Arvlowski's show, and and you hear the focus that they have towards fighting, and what they receive from it, what they gain from it, the power of the journey. Sure, I mean we're getting to a point now with the people that we've had on here. That's, and my whole life, we do this anyways. You just pick those pillars out that'll guide you in a in a good direction. He's yeah. one of those. Oh, I mean, for sure. Guys who didn't have any. I mean, that's a lot of times with fighters too, man. They're looking for something, right? They're looking whatever it is. That's a good point. What, like, in terms of looking for something, and is it the you think they're looking for the fulfillment of being a champion, or is it mastering their craft? It's all. It's all of that. I mean, you can't. You can't. Like I'm saying, dissect. when you say that that warrior path, it's in stages. Those guys who journey out to find that that ma you know that that man to guide them and in, in, in the direction they need to go, and you, that's when you know you found the right guy. I and mean, then you go in there, you start training not the right guy, then they'll leave. Right, go to another gym. <clears throat> sure, another until coach. you find uh, you know your crew, man, and then they just start to chip away at what you're at. And then once you've reached your pinnacle there, then you'll do 
And then that was fascinating to me about the crew. And, and you talk about that all the time. We talk about it in terms of the, the peer evaluation, the peer pressure in a positive way, right? Not, not the peer pressure that young kids are feel in adolescence, but that keeping the edges sharp. Yeah. So when we do plateau and you described it as, you know, you hit that, you know, you're the champion, you hold up, but guess what? You got the next guy coming and now you got to defend the title. Yeah. I mean, it's not like any other group or camp or fraternity you're going to be in. You, you, it's literally primitive. Like it's a wolf den. <laughs> Nobody has, the, I mean, you got the, the the leader, right? And then everyone has their jobs. They know what they are. It's not kind of a sign deal. And the pecking order is very prevalent when you walk in there. And then everyone's vying for their, their position. Dude, I got a funny story. I think I told this before. We were, we were in, I was working in Azerbaijan, and we, my buddy was, uh, at the time, uh, a brown belt in jiu-jitsu, and he, we wanted to roll in their mess. We walk in, and day one, they had him fight their, their, this 18-year-old kid who was a national champion. The next time, they had him fight this 23-year-old bigger dude who was uh, you know, a regional champion. And then the fourth day we went in, they, they had to fight you know the... The you know the Eastern European Azeri. This guy was six foot three and was literally. And I remember Joe was like, "All right." And every time he'd make me go fight him first, and and they would you know and this this final dude literally like pick me up in the air, slam me on the ground, and I was like, uh, 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 you know, I'll be over." <laughs> Death but bellow. it was it was the concept of that combativeness and and what it is that presence of that you're gonna fight you you can't get you can't ascend to any air, whether it's enlightenment from the journey or it's achievement from the goals right you can't get there without getting beat up for me that's fascinating yeah i mean it's, it, it has to be a way of life right it has to be something burning inside of you and uh, to, to follow it blindly but to put it into perspective, I heard, I think this, a general said this when they were like, why do we keep going back to combat after we get hurt? And it's the same principle with them. The same principle, what, what, what he said is the same principle why women will have another baby after they've had one. Interesting. I mean, you know, after a little while, you just, you don't forget about the pain. You just remember the moment and you, and you, and you, and you push from there. I mean, how can you seriously go in there and get punched? In the, look at the size of that dude, right? <laughs> but it's a challenge to know thy know yourself right know thyself know thyself yeah man and and it, and the best way to do that kind of is is against another man and the more they believe in themselves and the, the more they overcome then the the stronger mentally and physically they get that's words of wisdom right there so listen as you hear this story you listen to greg jackson you listen to how profound he thinks about things marcus and me oh, i want you to think about what you got coming up this week right what you got laid out in front of you this month or or what you want to achieve in your life that's right out in front of you that but but you're struggling to get going just think about the three points that greg jackson talked about first and foremost make the decision don't wafer don't want don't flounder don't just sit there Go ahead and make the decision. I am going to do this, right? That 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 precipice, that that crest, that tipping point in your life that that generates momentum and then don't quit on the decision. The second one is, man, you can't wing this stuff. You got to have a map at, or a methodology towards achieving success that is proven and that works. So, Marcus and I talk about it. We couldn't have become frogman without going through buds, going through SQT, going through platoon workouts and deploying. Uh, fighters can't be, become champions without having a great ground, ground game, having a great, great uh, 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 kickboxing, having great punching skills. You just can't. Nutrition. You can't get there. So have a methodology for success, a process of how to. And third and last and finally, and this was my favorite, Marcus, because we talk about this all the time. Be relentless. Now, if you don't know what relentless is, then, man, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry for that. You need to go find a Greg Jackson in your world. Go find a Marcus Luttrell. Read his book. Find somebody like one of the famous people uh, Greg has on his wall, Genghis Khan, George Washington, uh, all these amazing, and be inspired 
to discover the mm. relentlessness that's in you. This is the never quit mindset that we keep telling you about. This is the mindset that will allow you to overcome that adversity that, and face these obstacles and, and to, to cast out that negative insurgency in your mind and in your life so you too can become great or a champion in it at what you want to do. All right. So before we wind this up, Marcus, uh, we no. got a great listener reader story that I want to read uh, before we sign off. And it's, it's appropriate for, for this one. This is, this is a doozy. All right. From Tyler. All right. Just to start off, it's an honor to be emailing this to you guys. And it would be even a bigger honor if this was shared on the podcast, which I don't know if it will happen. But anyways, here you go. I'm a senior in high school here in Utah and love playing football. I was a defensive end weighing in at about 175 pounds, which is not the best weight for defensive linemen, but I love that position. I was super excited my senior year, and as I'd finished a great junior year leading my team in sacks, the expectations for my teammates and coaches was high, and I did my best to live up to that by setting goals to make it so my teammates could rely on Lee and to be sure that I would never let them down. After spring practice was over and the time had come to start summer fall contact practices, we went to team camp. It was two a days. During the second practice, I got a concussion. I stayed positive and tried to work back from it. But then during practice, two weeks before my first game, I got another concussion. This bummed me out that I would miss my first game. But then I had this weird panic attack at the game and ended up in the hospital. After that, we were going to travel to Chicago to play a team. But due to the concussion, I couldn't play there either. Eventually, I finally recovered enough to play at my first game, which all went well. Then after the, my second game, I finally felt like I fully recovered from the concussions, and I was worked into the regular rotation. Things were going well, but during the practice of the next week, I got another concussion. I talked with my doctor and asked if I got a fourth concussion, how would that would affect my chances of achieving my goal, my ultimate goal, of becoming a Navy SEAL. He said, it certainly would. I had to make the decision, and unfortunately, it had to be to stop playing football. However, fast forward to the end of the year, and I was awarded a very prestigious award in the football community for being the hardest worker and the most undaunted player. But here's the cool part. A lot of parents came up to me after and thanked me. I didn't understand and asked them, why? Why would you thank me? I don't understand what you mean. And they replied by telling me how much of a role model I had been for their child and how much I had motivated them to do better. Also, the best tackle on our team came up to me and told me how much I'd help him improve and get better. He's the most recruited tackle in Utah. I guess the lesson in this is that you never know how much you're going to help someone else by never quitting. And, and that's, it's better to help someone else than yourself. I know for a fact, I'm very motivated by Marcus and all SEALs that share their story. Thank you to all of you for all that you do and for your service. Now, when I read that, Marcus, I, I see a young person that gets it. That understand that it's about servicing others. It's not about the self. It's about making good decisions that will impact the greater world around you. Sure. I mean, it's easy to uh, not do the right thing when you think no one's looking, right? Amen. Kind of deal. You never, someone always is. That's the craziest part about it. It's tough to be on point 24 seven and a good Impossible. mood all the time and, and, and to have a smile, right? That's, and that's the biggest thing that gets overlooked, right? You're so focused and concentrated on, doing everything else right man you kind of overlook common human decency sometimes and that's basically all it would take in most situations to get through it yeah amen well tyler it's squared away though huh squared away. oh yeah yes he's gonna have a great great career and and that's the beginning of the mentality he needs to make it through seal training listen if you're out there and you're in the midst of of 
confusion or not knowing which direction to go or making a tough decision. No, just listen to what we're sharing with you. You know, make make the decisions based on your morality, based on what you know is right, based on the fact that you're you're thinking about the people who care most about you. And nine times out of 10, things are going to work out. Maybe not be pain-free, that's for sure, but things will work out and you will discover a higher reason for what the decision you made. Mm -hmm. All right, that's all I got for today. I want to thank God. I want to thank Christ in my life. I want to thank Greg Jackson, man, because he's made me a better yeah. coach and what and and how I'll approach my private coaching in life and coaching and mentoring young people. Uh, it just he's an amazing guy. I really feel blessed to have him on. I want to thank Wizard. I want to thank Marcus for doing this show with me. I want to thank my beautiful girls who make me better every day, and I want to thank you all, the listeners out there. Because without you guys and without the feedback that you send in, whether it's sharing your never quit stories with us. Or it's, it's just the, the comments you make on our social media. Man, it keeps me coming back for more. So thank you. God bless you. Marcus? Yeah, Greg, that was great. He got into it, right? Knew he would. Man, every time I get to hang around that guy, I just always keep him out to get as much information as I can, right? But thanks to everybody for coming back and listening. I, I can't say that enough, man. Like I, It's unbelievable. On, uh, thanks to the good Lord above and, and my wife. We, I can sit here talk about her all day, but the uh, life she's given me. I'm going to thank my martial arts instructor. Got yeah. a hold of me, man, I, at a young age. and My dad pushing us in that route, but uh, like I said, there, there's, there's certain pillars in your life that will step out. And he got a hold of me when I was real young. And I, I mean, to this day, everything he ever taught me and the path that he, that path he put me on, mind, body, and spirit, man, saved me more times than I can count. I tell you what, man. I'm blessed to have the life I have all, all the way from from the start, man. And I I know that. And it's because of him that I had some of the greatest stories and was able to do some of the greatest, you know, adventures that, that I ever even heard of. So I owe big thanks to him. And uh, I appreciate that. So that's all I got. I'm out. We're out.